guys, it's Janice from Ozark Family Homestead, and today's video is special. It's special because we're working together with another YouTuber, and we're talking about saving money. Now, our video today is specifically about saving money while having a large family, because there is a bit of a different dynamic there, and that's what we're going to talk about. Now, Dawn, over at Money Mom, her video is going to be specifically about saving money with a small family. So between her video and ours, surely there is going to be something there that you're going to find useful. What I will do is I will put a link in the description box below for Dawn's video over at Sensible Living with Money Mom, and you'll need to be sure to check it out too. But we're going to talk about large families. Here we go. Okay, so one of the ways we save quite a bit of money as a large family is by buying our clothing at the thrift store. Now, the one I like to use, we have a Goodwill here relatively local to us. And on Mondays and Tuesdays, they have 75% off one colored it's a tag. It's a plastic tag. I'll show you when I get inside. So 75% off Mondays and Tuesdays. And when I go in, I try to tunnel vision and only focus on, is that your watch beeping? It is a new watch. It's your new watch beeping. <laughs> I try to tunnel vision on whichever color is the 75% off. I don't want to look at the other colors and be tempted by the things that are going to be more expensive. So Anna and Abigail and I are going to go inside Goodwill. Today is a Monday, so we'll see what we can find, and we're going to take you along with us for a little bit of it here. You like that? Okay, so 75% off on the green tags there, so that's what we're looking for. You find green tags for baby sister? Yeah, those are fancy. <laughs> I think she's good on pants now. Let's see. And I found some things in there. Some pants. And some books. Okay, we're back in the van. I am so uncomfortable filming inside stores. So, I don't know how much you could hear. I was trying to talk very quietly so people wouldn't look at me. But today, it was 75% off everything with a green tag. So I was in there just looking for the things with the green tag, trying not to look at the things with red and yellow and blue tags. I do always try to hit the blue jeans because I have three boys that blow the knees out of blue jeans just so quickly. So I always check there for the color of the tag that is um, on the sale that day. And there wasn't much to look at today. I don't know if someone got there before me or what. I did find one pair with the green tag on it. I think I may just show you this when I get home because it's hard to do in the van and hold the camera. But I found one pair. It was regular price. Guys, this is crazy. $16.19 for a pair of blue jeans that don't have the tag on them. I could not afford to buy thrift store clothes brand new. <laughs> I just can't believe how expensive they are. But with the 75% off, I did go ahead and get this one pair. I'm thinking they might fit David. I figure surely between the three boys, they'll fit somebody. That's my thinking. So I did get the one pair of blue jeans, and I found three books with green tags also. I'll show you those when I get back home. And you know we like books, right? but I did try to stick to the green tags, so it's all okay, right? Okay, so um, I always hit the blue jeans, I always hit the book section, and I always hit the shoes section. So speaking of shoes, I do want to show you one other system that I implement to help me keep track of my inventory, just what shoes we have on hand and what shoes I need to purchase. So I'm going to show you that next. Okay, here is a little stack of index cards that I keep in my wallet, um, in my purse, so it's always with me when I'm inside a store. And on this, like this one here is for farm shoes, and I go through all the sizes. I begin at size four for my little, my little toddlers, and go on up, and then when they 
cross over into the larger sizes here. Now, let me see. For example, size ones. For size ones, I have one pair of boys' farm shoes and three pair of girls' farm shoes. So if I run across a good deal on a pair of girls' farm shoes in size one, I'm going to pass it up because I already have three pair in my storage tubs at the house. Now, on the other hand, if I find a good pair of size seven shoes that are okay for a boy to wear, I'm going to go ahead and pick those up because I do not have any uh, size seven shoes for boys, which would be for David at this point, since Samuel and Andrew are above that size. But this helps me to know I can pull this out and um, just know what I have on hand. And I have one of these for girls' town shoes as well. And I have a system. The little star means it's a sandal. A little heart means it's a dress shoe. So size 9 girls, we have a pair of gold sandals and pink sandals and silver sandals and white dress shoes and some tennis shoes all in a size nine. So, and this is uh, stapled together because I have more <laughs> of the girls there in that system. Uh, snow boots and, oh, there's the boys town shoes. And then mud boots. Now, one thing I do want to point out, your watch is making noise again, Anna. <laughs> It's six o'clock. Um, one thing I do want to point out for those with large families or anticipating being a large family, something I wish I would have done differently, mud boots and snow boots. Do not get the pretty pink ones or the pretty blue ones. If you anticipate being a large family, having multiple children, just get some neutral boots that boys, girls, it doesn't matter. Let them wear it. If you're not wanting your little boy to be wearing pink boots uh, from his older sister, then just get some neutral shoes. And um, because we did not do that when Sam was born, you know, we bought blue everything and all that stuff. And then when Sarah came around, we bought pink everything. I wish we would have just bought neutral and everybody can wear it. So that's what I would recommend. But I like my system. It comes in handy, and I can put all the things on it that I think is important. All right, quick little Goodwill haul here. I already told you what I've got, but I wanted to show you here, even though it's not much. But the pants, these pants uh, do not have tags on them, but they are Levi's, and they look to be in really good condition. So... And they were the green tag. Again, I was just looking for the uh, tags that were part of the 75% off. But, I mean, ridiculous. $16.19. I just, it bothers me. But with the 75% off, I paid $4.04 for these pants. And I'm good with that. Really, I wanted to just give you guys an example of the deals you can get when you do go in on those 75% off days. And then I mentioned the three books that I had picked up. And these also, all green tags, because that's what I was focusing on. These two up here were regular $1.19. And so I paid $0.29 cents each for these books. Uh, you know, we're a homeschooling family, so books are a big deal for us. Um, this one is about ancient Greece. And this one is about Admiral Byrd exploring Antarctica. So these will be great on our history shelves. And then this book, I'm not familiar with this title. So if this is a big flop of a book, you guys will have to let me know. It had the seal on it here, and it was from a local high school library. I guess they did a purging of books and donated them to Goodwill. I don't know. But it was a little more expensive. With the 75% off, I ended up paying $0.56 cents for this one here. So I'm taking a gamble on this one. Um, it, it had the look of a good book. So this one will go on our shelves as well. So again, if your local thrift stores have a 75% off special days, special sale of some sort like that, 
take advantage of it and you can find really neat things for your family at a fraction of the cost. Okay, now you guys know we're friends if I'm showing you the storage area of my garage, right? Okay, so we're all good friends now and y'all are going to see my storage tubs, the, uh, the way I keep things because hand-me-downs. Hand-me-downs are a great way to stretch a dollar if you have a large family especially. So, I keep things like, for instance, here, snow boots up to size 13 here in the green. It's snow boots, size 1 and up, down here in the brown. I keep these and use them for all seven of the children. Again, going back to the gender neutral, I encourage that as well. And I just label the tubs of clothes. And the girls, we just transition things. I even, I've even kept my cloth diapers just in case there's an eighth baby. Then I don't have to rebuy everything all over again. Newborn accessories. Baby blankets up there. There's some little girls' clothing. So... By having this system, I don't even know how much money this has saved us over the years from girls now we're going into boys clothes now all the younger boys clothes I have gotten rid of because David is my youngest and he is now 12 so we have passed along the clothes that uh, he's not in anymore but even clothing okay shoes are a big deal there's town shoes boys town shoes size 1 and up here we have the mud boots up to size 13 for the little ones. Mud boots size 1 and up. And again, being here on the homestead, we use lots and lots of mud boots. Town shoes for girls up to size 13. Winter bibs for working outside. So having all of these things here and organized, there's the girls' town shoes size 1 and up. And I do the same thing with farm shoes. If you remember my shoe system on that, uh, those index cards that I keep in my wallet for whenever I'm in the thrift stores, I have these same tubs categorized that same way so I can find what I need to look for. But this system has saved us a lot of money, especially with the shoes, so I do not have to rebuy fresh shoes for every single child. And if you have a large family, I want to encourage you to do something similar to this, whatever works for you, and uh, save some money. Okay, and something else that saves us, I think, a tremendous amount of money is line drying our clothes. With the quantity of laundry that we do every day, I, I don't know exactly what the savings is but I have a commercial size washing machine and I do at least one load of laundry per day. And I have the biggest clothesline that I could find that was the, um, are they called umbrella clotheslines? I'm not sure what the technical term is. It's not one big long strand of a clothesline. This has four sides and it spins. But with the quantity that I do by not running the dryer, there has to be a significant savings. I guess I need to sit down and do some math and try to figure out what it is. Now, I use the clothesline spring, summer, fall, anytime it's not raining, I will be using the clothesline. I'll show you the setup that we use inside the house too because in the winter, when we have our wood stove going to heat the house, I uh, set drying racks in front of that cook stove or that wood stove and dry our laundry that way. So the only time our dryer is really run is when it's warm weather but rainy or when it's cold weather and I have something big that won't fit on my drying racks like sheets or something like that. Then I'll use the dryer. But line drying, I recommend it. Been doing it for 13 years now. And this is how we set it up in the winter time. So you're gonna have to use your imaginations here. 
it is end of July, beginning of August. It's hot here. So let's pretend that there's a roaring fire going in that wood stove right now and it's beautiful and you just like to sit and watch it because it makes you feel comfy cozy. And it's putting out a lot of heat. And I have three of these drying racks. I have two of this shorter style here, those two there, and I have this one taller one here in the middle. Oh, also pretend you do not see all the pears <laughs> down there. We harvested from our pear tree, okay. I have to show you then. We harvested from our pear tree. We have two pear trees, and this is what we've brought in so far. And uh, we need to do some storing and preserving of pears. Okay, but it's winter time. It's winter time, and we're pretending that's not there. We've got a roaring fire, and all the laundry is draped on these three drying racks. I will adjust my routine in the winter time, and I will do my laundry in the evening. And just before everybody goes to bed, I will come in here and we will drape everything on these clothes racks here. And we have the wood stove, we crank it up for the nighttime and in the morning it will pretty much all be dried. And I did not have to run my dryer at all. Um, we will then fold it first thing in the morning and then go ahead and put things away. Um, I make stacks on the kitchen table here and everybody puts their clothing away before they eat breakfast in the morning. So that's our routine. And again, like I had said earlier, the only reason that I would not be using these if it's, is if it's something like sheets that wouldn't fit that great here. And then I will go ahead and use the dryer in that case. I feel like there was something else I was going to tell you guys. Oh, I was going to tell you the reason why I do it at nighttime. This just takes up the big walkway between the front door and on into the kitchen, which is the main thoroughfare here in our house. And obviously, I do not want this space taken up in the daytime. So that is why I uh, change my schedule and we do laundry in the evening. So these can sit out at night and they're not a bother. Okay, one of the other ways that I think really, really helps our family save money is by getting rid of expenses that we used to have in our monthly budget. And I'm about to show you, that's why I'm heading outside here, I'm about to show you a way that we save money every month and most people do pay this bill that we don't pay. So here, I'm gonna turn the camera around here and I'll show you what we do differently. All right, now pay no attention to any rooster noises or goat noises that you may hear in the background because right now we're focusing on, not on Dudley the goat, we're focusing on the burn barrel right here. This burn barrel is what enables us to burn our trash every month. We handle our own trash management, I guess you could say. This barrel here costs us probably $15. It's just a metal barrel with a lid on top. And for that $15, we can burn trash in this for at least a year. Sean says that we typically get more than a year out of these burn barrels. And this is what we put our burnable trash in. We have a little, uh, oh, what are these called? Concrete blocks down here set up and this is what we use to burn our trash. Now, I was thinking about doing a video on our trash management. If that's something you think you would be interested in, put it in the comments below. If you guys are interested in how we do it, you know, I'll share the whole, uh, the whole routine that we go through with recycling and burnables, just all the things. So if you're interested in that, let me know. I am going to go through one other item that we just do without an expense that most households have, I think. TV. TV is the other thing that we do not spend money on. So we have not paid for like cable, satellite, any of that stuff since 2009, whenever we moved out here to this homestead. So no bill for that whatsoever except there was probably about a five year period where we did have Netflix for that five years. But we have not even done Netflix for a very, very long time. So 
we don't do Netflix, we don't do Disney Plus, we don't we don't do any of them. I don't know what all of them are even anymore, but we don't do any of them. That's a big big fat zero on our monthly budget. Now, what we do do is we do get DVDs from the library and they will do interlibrary loan for us for free if there's a specific title that we want to watch. Uh, we do have a collection of DVDs here in the Entertainment Center that the family likes to watch together. And we have YouTube. YouTube is great, you guys. So we can get on YouTube and watch things that our family wants to see too. So, Abigail, are you doing a good job as my camera woman? Mm -hmm. Okay. Abigail's recording for us here. So, thumbs up for Abigail. <laughs> are you giggling? <laughs> okay. On to the next thing. Okay, so we're going to talk about next the way that if I have to decrease our monthly budget, I typically go for the grocery aspect of it first. Since we've already pretty much eliminated all the non-essential things out of our monthly budget, groceries is where I can cut back. And this is the part where I want to encourage you to grow as much of your own food as you are able to because it does help. It does take some blood, sweat, and tears, but it does help with the grocery budget. So any fruits or vegetables or eggs, milk, meats that you might be able to grow yourself, look into that. Now, we have a pretty full homestead with the dairy cow and the chickens, and we raise our own meat birds, and we raise ducks, and we have a big garden, and we have an orchard, and we have the berry patches. But I know there are people living in, say, a subdivision, and you can't have those things. But what can you do? Let's look at what you can do and then go from there. Can you have hens, but not a rooster? Some places do that. Uh, some people will eat rabbit meat. Is that something that you can do in your area? Or quail for eggs? Or quail for meat? Container gardening. Don't mind the cow. <laughs> The dairy cow sees me and wants me to come pay attention to her <laughs> and she's noisy. My point is to just think about what you can do to raise your own food and become less dependent upon the grocery store but also decrease your monthly expenses at the same time. Okay Daisy, I'm coming. Okay, speaking of growing some of your own food, this is just some of the things that we've had brought in just over the last couple days. The green beans here are actually from last year's canning, but we're getting tomatoes and cucumbers and peppers and okra and lemon squash and Chinese long beans and teeny little tigger cantaloupes. Did I say peppers? I don't even remember. <laughs> and the eggs and things, of course, too. But we're going to transition from growing your own food to cooking from scratch. So Sarah is over here finishing up some supper. She is cooking from scratch here with a uh, egg roll in a bowl recipe. So let's talk about that just a little bit because this is a huge way to save money. Okay, so even if you're not interested in growing your own food, please look into cooking from scratch. I really think that that is a big, big way to decrease your grocery budget. So by just having a well-stocked pantry with basic food staples, I can pretty much make anything that my family might want. There are a few exceptions, but for the most part, we have just a huge, a huge selection of foods that I can make because I have a well-stocked pantry of staples and I know how to make things from scratch. So it really opens up a lot of doors for you. And I know it can get overwhelming, but if you could just start with maybe one new recipe per week, and after a while, you're gonna have a whole range of skills under your belt. You're gonna have recipes that you're familiar with, and it's gonna become easier and easier. There will be a snowball effect here. So if you do have any specific questions on cooking from scratch, let me know in the comments below there. Also, I'm always looking for ideas for new videos that you guys are interested in. So if you have suggestions, I'd like to hear them. Oh, you guys, I just about forgot something. Okay, no eating out. 
we don't eat out. It's not in the budget. We just don't do it. So if our family of nine were to go out to eat, I mean, I'm not kidding. It would easily be $100 for us to go out to eat. So we just don't. Now, I do put certain things, practices into place here so that I minimize the likelihood of us wanting to go out to eat because that's the trick right there. You have to be prepared ahead of time. So if I know that there is a meal that we are going to be on the road for, we're going to be in town for, I will plan ahead and make sure we have sandwiches packed up. Now I will splurge on the little, the, the snack, the individual snack baggies of chips. I'll splurge on those and we'll take those along in the van with us whenever we're driving and that keeps us from going through a drive through now there's also times, at least there are for me, where it's evening, it's supper time, time's gotten away from me, it's late, and I will go, I have no desire to cook, or I have no time to cook, so I have to make sure that I have things on hand here in the house that I have bought with the grocery budget, and they're fast, they're my fast food here for this large family. And for me, that will be things like the, um, there are bags of frozen chicken strips from Aldi. Uh, blue baggies is what um, ours look like at our Aldi. And I will keep a couple of those in the freezer at all times. So if I need fast food, we will cook those up and make big chicken salads um, with those. Or simple things like hot dogs. We don't even eat them with buns. We just have the hot dogs and we can heat up some vegetables real quick and that would be fast food for us. And that keeps us from going through a drive through or we don't have takeout here in the county where we're at, but maybe keeps you from getting pizza delivery or whatever you have available in your area. So it just takes a little bit of planning ahead and then we don't have that huge expense because I have prepared for those lazy days or busy days or whatever happens to come up. The last food related item I want to touch on real quick I think is fairly common knowledge by this point and that is buying in bulk. If you're feeding a lot of people it makes sense to buy things in a larger quantity because you typically get a price break per pound per ounce per unit if you're buying it that way. And if you are buying for a bunch of people, then you're also going to go through that larger quantity faster as well. So it just makes sense. So I'll get things like here's cocoa powder and hard red wheat and popcorn and oats. I'll get all kinds of things that I buy in 25 pound bags, 50 pound bags, and then I will store them in these buckets and we will just use them first in first out and it ends up being a savings over time for our family. So if you are feeding a lot of people and you have access to a place where you can buy things in large quantities, take advantage of that. I use as I use Azure standard, but you may have others that you can use uh, in your area. All right guys, those are my ideas that I had for you today. Now, I know you guys are going to have more ideas and I want you to share them. I want us to brainstorm together. I want us to share all the ideas and everybody can benefit from them and we're all saving money and it's a big happy day. So please comment below with your ideas, whether it's a large family or a small family. Also make sure you check out Dawn over at Sensible Living with Money Mom. She has a video out today too on this same topic, but for small families. So check her out. I'm going to put the link in the description box below. And if you liked my video, please give me a thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed. And if you could tell your family and friends to watch Ozark Family Homestead, it would help our family's channel grow. Thank you so much, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching Ozark Family Homestead. Bye.